Hello and welcome to the Daily Beans for Monday, August 5th, 2019. Today we discuss Lindsey Graham, Brett Kavanaugh ethics complaints are dismissed, Ratcliffe is out, Trump praises a robbery, another Republican exodus, new Trump tariffs, and more shootings. I'm your host, A.G., and with me today are Jaleesa Johnson. Hello. And Jordan Coburn. Hello. Hey, guys. Um, hey. I hate to ask how your weekend was, because I'm sure it started off great, and then we had these uh, two shootings. Yeah, a lot of people fell asleep to one shooting and woke up to another. I was just up late, and I was like, really? It's midnight, and it, a news like story just broke. That blew my mind that it was just like a long, crazy day that yeah. wouldn't end. Yeah, it, it seemed like it never stopped. Mm-hmm. And then the, uh, right on the heels of the Gilroy shooting, too. Oh, yeah. So we've had two and less two and 24 hours and then one a couple days before that and then we had another one a week before that so it's um becoming i i I can't even say it's becoming untenable it was an untenable when it happened in columbine uh, all those years ago Um, right and we're going to talk about this we're going to discuss this a little bit more later in the show uh julissa you have this uh, in your hot notes so Mm -hmm. we're we'll make sure to cover those um but you know normally we start off with a chipper i had a great weekend um this scoop and that's just not um not the case this weekend. So a few housekeeping notes, guys. Please subscribe, search and subscribe to the Daily Beans feed because we're going to be pulling the Daily Beans out of the Mueller She Wrote feed. We've been importing it in there for you so it shows up. But if you're a patron, you don't need to do anything because you'll continue to get both shows in your premium feed because we post them both on Patreon. So you don't have to do anything to continue to get them. Also, tickets are still available for the August 30th live show in San Francisco. Um, We got a great review for our Chicago show at Lincoln Hall. They said three SoCal women have carved out their niche with focused, funny and accessible vivisections of the constant onslaught Uh, and quote, they're like the Beastie Boys of podcast punditry, (laughs) trading tidbits and quips instead of rhymes with a dash of wait, wait, don't tell me games. So I thought that was really nice. Thank you, Third Coast Review, for the kind words. Um, tickets and info for our live shows are at the daily or excuse me at dailybeanspod.com we're working on a second vip meet and greet off-site in san francisco for patrons on thursday august 29th at 9 p.m check your patreon inbox for details in the coming weeks we aren't probably not going to have it all set up this week um you would you do have to be a ticket holder to the main show to be able to go to that and if you have a ticket to the vip meet and greet at the show and the show you can still also go to this second meet and greet as well so you're welcome uh, to join us. Not like, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so you're welcome. I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> yeah, because it sounded sort of bitchy for a second there. Uh, we do have a lot of no- uh, We do have a lot of news from this weekend, so let's hit the hot notes. Hot notes. All right, guys, as, I, as we were talking at the top of the show, uh, two more mass shootings this weekend, uh, this time El Paso and then Dayton, Ohio. Jaleesa, well, first of all, the Dayton, Ohio one is brand new and fresh. And that uh, is 10, I think, uh, is the death count there uh, right now, 24th an additional 24 injured. Um, and I, these are acts of domestic terrorism. This is white supremacy. Uh, we know where this is coming from. We know what's fueling it. Uh, and but just within 24 hours of that, before that, we had this shooting in El Paso, and we're, we have, we actually know more about the shooter in that in that um, act of terrorism, Jaleesa. Definitely, yeah. So uh, unfortunately, this week there was another mass shooting at a Walmart in El Paso that left 20 people dead and 26 injured. And this was in a city that supposedly was considered the safest city in America for a long time. I didn't know that about El Paso. Yeah, I think he did, the shooter did come from outside El Paso. That makes sense. Yeah, but Dallas. just considering, yeah, where it happened. Yeah, he he drove there. It's just like, like the Gilroy eight shooting hours or something. Yeah, they come from other places often. It seems and. Um, Yeah, not to mention this was the second Walmart shooting just this week. The first one happened on July 30th in Mississippi, where a disgruntled employee killed two co-workers and injured an officer. But this time, the shooter is a 21-year-old piece of shit white supremacist whose name I won't say personally. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I don't want to give him any clout. (laughs) I agree. Don't say his name. Totally. And I commend Facebook and Instagram for taking down his accounts. I also commend the FBI for opening a domestic terror investigation, finally. And uh, some things I wanted to mention about this story is that the El Paso police were able to detain the shooter without firing a single bullet, which is really interesting. And I actually appreciate that. It just makes me think about all the people that were not treated that way in cases where they were just suspected of having a weapon. Mm -hmm. Also, three Mexican citizens were among the fatalities and seven were injured. 
Many people were even afraid to go to the family re- reunification centers out of fear that they would be detained. And Border Patrol had to put out a statement assuring family members that they would not be carted at the centers. And a lot of presidential candidates have already come out condemning the attack, including Trump. However, Beto O'Rourke straight up blamed Trump and said that his racist rhetoric is what got us here in the first place. Yeah, and and you also have to wonder how many people did not seek treatment at uh, medical facilities because uh, they were afraid they'd be deported. That Mm -hmm. is a a negative um, and an intended consequence of uh, Trump's border policy. And I think, and and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail for this, but this would be an amazing time for Beto to drop out of the presidential race and run for Senate in Texas again to protect Texas against this kind of future um, hate crime yeah. uh, and, and domestic terrorism situation. Um, <clears throat> because I I really feel like that is, first of all, Texas is really important to us if we can get Texas this time around. And I think Beto is so good at campaigning uh, in, in that state. And he we need him as a senator. And <clears throat> also Will Hurd is dropping out of Texas 23, which is going to give us a, a better shot at that district. And I don't want to politicize this and make it about the election, but I kind of do, because until we elect um, the right officials, we aren't going to be able to solve this problem because of the just, just the Republicans are bought and sold, eat, bought and, not just by the NRA, but now by their constituents. Yeah. And I don't want to give a bad rep to the idea of politicizing. I get where that comes from in a derogatory sense, but politics is supposed to reflect the times and society's needs. And we need gun reform. It's not mm-hmm. even a matter of like, oh, this is a good talking point. It's a terrible talking point, but it has to be addressed. Like it's an it's a terrible thing that's happening. Yeah. And if but you want us so to wait important. two days to call the guy uh, after we get his number, meaning, you know, if you want us to get, like have a certain amount of period to send thoughts and prayers, mm-hmm. um, we don't have that time period anymore with these back to back shootings. It's becoming so frequent that there's no time to pause and wait until it's quote unquote okay to talk about the politics of it and and it bothers me when people do that you need to wait and and out of respect for the dead we don't have time to wait we don't yeah and i think in addition to gun sense laws because these people are buying guns the el paso shooter bought his gun completely legally everything about what he did was legal leading up to the event yeah gilroy as well Yeah. yeah and so there's gun sense laws that need to be passed for even being allowed to purchase a weapon like that, that nobody needs. Nobody needs that. That should be a red flag automatically. Yes. Yeah. Maybe if you want to have like ranges where people can go and fire those weapons and then leave without the weapons or like if you have to fuck it, if you see it. I don't know. But then that's like that's not even it's not a even Second the- Amendment thing at that point, because, yeah, then you don't get to have it on you, which is what they these people are so adamant about. It's mm-hmm. not worth lives. No. Um, and anyone who needs a rapid fire weapon like this in order to hit a target sucks at guns and you should check out a new hobby. Mm-hmm. Well, um, they, they want them for the destruction that they can cause. Yeah. Otherwise, like, that's why? Yeah. yeah. I and, think. Sorry, go ahead. Um, Just really quick. I also saw. Uh, well, so I think what we also need to do in addition to the gun sense laws is treat these people as if it's like a band of ISIS members living and breeding in the United States, mm-hmm. which which is if if these were Islamic people, yeah, it and would be treated as a like the biggest national security threat, which it is. And we don't have those domestic right terrorism now. laws. Right. Yeah. Uh, McCabe was on this morning um, talking about this. He's like, the reason we do it, you know, that when it's a foreign, when it's ISIS or whatever, we under the Patriot Act, we have these really strict laws about terrorism. But when it's here in the United States, everyone's very careful not to tread on First Amendment rights, not Second Amendment rights, but First Amendment right. rights because of your thoughts behind this, like these manifestos that these guys put out right before they say we don't want to in- infringe on their freedom of speech. And if they put something like that out and then we investigate that, then we're kind of policing thought. Mm-hmm. And they are really t- very t- tread super lightly on that. And but we it would be very simple to come up with some domestic terrorism laws that do not infringe on the first amendment yeah like jordan said if you think of it as a muslim which on, on a, obviously we don't think that they should be targeted like this but if you just like think about how america normally responds to like a manifesto from you know a terrorist that happens to be brown it's like america responds pretty quickly that's because the laws are written that way exactly and mm-hmm. so it's all, always about race i think or just the fear right. of the others and it reminds me of the argument about the death penalty people are so afraid of the ones that they think should be killed that they're willing to kill innocent lives and honestly a lot of them are innocent lives to begin with but just the idea of like yeah let's just have this terrible thing happen for the sake of our security it's like it's just kind of crazy 
Yeah, and and anyone who is pro gun would say, you know, we don't want to take guns out of the hands of law abiding citizens, and that's precisely what we don't want to do. We we want to keep guns, not keep guns in the hands of, but <clears throat> allow law abiding citizens to own guns if they want under their Second Amendment rights. But you have to limit. It's not illegal or unconstitutional to limit the kind of gun you can have, and that's why we had the assault weapons ban, which the Brady Bill, which was legal. It's their Supreme Court precedent all the time saying that we can draw these lines around what you can and can't have as a weapon. It's why we all can't have nuclear warheads at our houses, right? Right. Or, or carry around <laughs> plutonium because that's illegal. And, and we are fine with putting restrictions on Second Amendment that way. Mm -hmm. We should be fine with these kind of like mass killing machines and, and gun rights lobbyists and 2A NRA people are like, you don't even know what you mean when you say assault rifle. You don't know what you mean when you say assault weapons ban. That's the language used in the Brady Bill. That should be what we uh, um, in incorporate here. And if if, if you want to come at me and say I don't know enough about guns uh, to be able to regulate them, then you have to ask. I have to ask you why you want to regulate my vagina because you don't know anything about that. So mm -hmm. it's it's just it's so frustrating. Yeah, and, very and, hypocritical in a lot of ways. And we're not going to get out of out from under this until we um, vote blue. That's, yeah, it's even those that, that are truly just there for the sake of protecting their families, they, you know, like the NRA because they want to be able to just have a gun for, I guess, moral sake, it's still not worth the innocent lives that are being lost, like, by not having these bans, like you said, like, yep. just carving out the shit, you know? Have a universal background check, have a federal registry for your uh, guns, uh, I mean, have insurance, it's it, it all makes sense. It makes total sense. And yeah. there's no reason not to do it. Most Americans agree. I mean, these rings of people that organize these white supremacists that have like fucking like man caves of hatred. Those 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 doors should be busted down. And oh, those yeah. people should be questioned like that. If if these links in this this organizing is day after day now literally resulting in mass shootings that almost a hundred percent of the time now it seems have direct ties to white supremacy then those meetings should be seriously considered like if you knew that there were members of other extremist organizations from other countries meeting mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck at this point like you just got to watch that 1a stuff you know because like if you're if you're on the terrorist no fly list um, you can actually still get a gun. I don't think you should be able to, but most people would agree with that. Even the even the two A people, if you're on the terrorist no fly list, if you are belong actively to a terrorist organization like ISIS or Al Qaeda, or you've been you've gone over there to be trained and you come home, you, you should not be able to purchase a gun. Yeah, you still can. Uh, you shouldn't be able to. Uh, but then if you are, if you do something, then you are an immediate domestic terrorist, and there are laws against that, and you can be criminally charged. It's usually too late for, at that point. Though, <clears> not to say that you're, this is your <laughs> decision, but, but yeah. For white Crazy. supremacy groups just belonging to a white supremacy group um they're saying that that thought is uh, is protected under the first amendment and we can't prevent them from buying guns or having guns or owning guns just because they are total white supremacist racist pieces of shit that right. want to start a civil war and kill all brown people yeah it's right the same problem right? i just i i totally understand the 1a stuff right that's like why we haven't started doing more about it up until this point but now we know that at those meetings like the physical meetings that happen they're talking tactics they're talking ways to to like shoot more effectively yeah for... but at the very least if somebody commits a crime in the name of these terrorist organizations white supremacy and 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 8chan and all these guys you should be able to be criminally prosecuted right. for that as a terrorist. I think and right now you're to. not. Yeah, I yeah. guess this is the first case, but right? But that's also they've... like an after the fact thing, which is important. But it's like, I just think we we have given up so much of our own privacy freedoms because of like Patriot Act things. And the fact that something like the Patriot Act doesn't have effects that are keeping us safe on our own soil from our own citizens that are doing this is fucking bullshit. That's yeah. so true. Yeah, I agree. I concur. Uh, vote blue. Yeah. And I also want to correct something that I said really quick. I said if these were um, Islamic people, the situation would be. I very much so did not mean to say that all Islamic people are Islamic extremists. I know you all know I didn't mean that, but just no. to make that yeah. very explicit. Just the way that if they, they were. Know, but, but if they were, they would be immediately attacked. Yes. For this, for being Islamic. Yeah. Because like, and that, and, and that we sit around, that one side sits around and prays that whoever the shooter is wasn't a white guy. 
and the other side sit around, sits around and prays to God that this, that this the shooter wasn't a person of color, just so that there's not an attack from the other yeah. side when what we should be worrying about is Americans dying. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I have one more thing that I think is really interesting. I I've been I've listened to a bunch of podcasts talking about people that are self radicalized Islamic extremists that begin. They're born in the U.S., total U.S. citizens. They start, you know, reading stuff online, getting involved in these chat rooms. They fly over, you know, to Pakistan, get radicalized in Afghanistan and and train and stuff and then come back with the plans of carrying out an attack. We read about this in The Threat, right? And there there's First Amendment protections that often result in them not being apprehended before they leave the country to go because those are lone wolves, like more or less in the United States, right? They're not lone wolves in the sense that they're part of this active organization that's uh, like global. the white supremacy groups. Right. But then the white supremacy groups, like these people are not lone wolves. It, it is much more rare for someone to no, self radicalize. They're, they're trying and go to one to up each country. other. They're trying to beat each other's counts from right. what I'm understanding from posts on 8chan, right? They're trying to like, oh you got twenty, I'm gonna try for the you know, and it's and and I'm interested to see if the connection between Gilroy and El Paso and um, Dayton, if they, if these were somehow connected, at least through these supremacy groups, to see if they were trying to build on something or do something together or organize in some way. Because you're right, it's way more organized than these lone wolf radicalized um, ISIS fighters that are born in the U.S. and then go and train and come mm-hmm. back. Those are one-off folks, yeah. usually. And their ages are so similar, too. These Trump supporters, are, I think Gilroy was 19 and yeah. then 21 in El Paso mm-hmm. and 24 in Dayton. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's an old tactic uh, for recruiting uh, white supremacists is mm-hmm. like uh, othering, making you, you know, you because you are a, a, a outcast who incel, who whatever girls don't like, or et yeah. cetera. Your whole generation, you have this low like, self-esteem, yeah. which is what happens when you're that age. You know, you just feel like super lonely and rejected and bu- bullied and picked on. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in Columbine, uh, Columbine also specifically, yeah. then you become then you're vulnerable to a group coming in and say we love you we think you're awesome we think you're hot we love your dick you come and join our thing and fuck those other people Mm -hmm. because they're the dumb ones they're the assholes they're the snowflakes they're the babies they're the weak ones we're the strong ones and they're Mm -hmm. more susceptible to be brought into these groups so i think that age says a lot yeah and really quick just to fact check myself on something i said a few episodes ago the might is right book that the gilroy shooter read i had said that i didn't know if it was explicitly like about white supremacy it 100 percent mentions how the anglo-saxon race is the superior race and, and women are weak and women are weak and it's all and it says whoever is the more mighty deserves to live on and anyone that is weak should be met with hatred that's an explicit tenet of that book and it's really i part of me wants to order it and read it just to see like exactly what these people have in their brain i think that's really important for us to understand not to understand in the sense to like see where they're coming from obviously but to prepare so we can direct exactly like where money needs to go in in groups that are yeah Mm -hmm. that are investigating these people and and like to better identify them and like I don't fucking yeah. I no, you're making know. great points. This is what I think of when Steve Bannon says we have to break the system to change it. They're talking about just having this emotional and mental break of these young people that it can go out and cause all this chaos, and then they can just rise from the ashes as the new you know power. And it's America was racist before, like it currently still is. But imagine how much racist or more racist they want it to be. Like their goals are just <sighs> Hitler like. Yeah, hmm. yeah, it's really. Uh, horrible and again our, our our hearts and love and support goes out to anyone who is affected by this and i i do realize the whole country was affected by this yeah but specifically also the families um yeah. and um the victims it's i i don't even know and i feel like i'm getting numb to it i feel like it's just happening so often now um and but we've been saying that as a, as a collective uh group of people who are trying to stop this for a really long time now mm-hmm. uh, but uh you know think of the kids think of your families think of it it can happen where you're at uh, yeah and to anyone yeah and we have to be um we have to stop it mm-hmm. we have to stop it it's it's of the utmost importance this uh gun epidemic is a public health problem and it needs to be treated as such and white supremacy also needs to be dealt with. Uh, and we need to get a president in the White House that doesn't dog whistle and allow 
uh, and incite mm-hmm. uh, this kind of thing. Dude, so. the very least he could do is create a, like a task force on white supremacy or something. The That's very like the least. least. He yeah. wants a space force first. Though. Right. They, they deny <laughs> yes. that it's a problem. Mm-hmm. And um, that says a lot. And mm-hmm. also calling these acts, he says what happened was an act of... Um, what did he say? Hate? No, it, no, no. It wasn't hate. That's oh. the issue that I have with it. He said this was a cowardly act. Yeah, this was like cowardice. Like so there was a better way to he, do he it. He always says cowardly. Yeah, I wonder he what says that, that means. these are cowards that do it, and it's like these are not cowards. I mean, yes, maybe in in the deepest origins of their sure they're cowards but that's not what they're doing right what they're doing is it's a very bold blatant display of hate and violence that is not cowardice Mm -hmm. right like like why does he choose that word hate hate is bred from from some very cowardly origins i think yeah i mean i do think they're fucking cowards right but that's not but what is happening that's not at the root of what they're doing yes that is not actions are not cowardly right that is not uh i i I do think their actions are cowardly but that's not how they should be defined is what i'm saying yeah yeah. i don't think in the context of interpreting it that is helpful at all for him to say it is not helpful at right like but i i do think these are fucking cowards i Um, as the president he's just people people. yes because they can't fathom because they're scared right that mm-hmm. is the whole basis of fear is like mm-hmm. and hatred like they're is a being dying scared that they're, or something yes. yeah brave so, people actually overcome those fears deal with them and move on like grown-ass very adults. true yes so that's this is not bravery i think is what he was i'm trying. trying to say yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. that's not what he's trying to say oh you don't though. think he's I'll... trying to take it away from hate and put it onto yes. something else ah. uh, so, uh, some sort of weakness and i was that, wondering why he would yeah, use that I think word without yeah. the nuance so i think of, we all agree i mm-hmm. oh 100 yeah. percent. yeah i know we all do for sure i i think yeah it's it's just like something that's it, it takes first off it makes you think oh this is like a meek person you know you you think of this person as some meek coward Mm -hmm. in that moment in in response to what they did and i think that directly breeds into like a mental health conversation right as opposed to this is direct violence that's because of of, like these crazy guns oh i see you're saying it lends to their whole credence that we need mental health care not to yeah it just lends to the wrong conversation it is the wrong conversation yeah all right, guys, moving along here. Uh, let's see. Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham crackers. He ignored a Senate Judiciary Committee rule. Actually, all the rules um, <laughs> they had previously agreed to. The, the Republicans did just six months ago. They previously agreed to these rules. He ignored them all as he pushed through a controversial asylum bill. Speaking of xenophobia and hate, despite Democrats having uh, worked on over 140 amendments to the bill in good faith, Graham waived committee rules to ignore the amendments and forego debates to ram the bill through committee with a 1210 vote, long party lines, to the full Senate, where it will not get the 60 votes it needs to pass. Graham's bill would ignore the Flores decision, disallowing detention of children for more than 72 hours by allowing detention of families for up to 100 days. It would require asylum claims to be filed in Mexico or their home country, not here. But it would also provide funding for 500 new immigration judges. And it would allow unaccompanied minors to be sent back to their home countries, unaccompanied minors. While Feinstein was objecting to the total lack of respect for committee rules, Republicans were laughing and checking their phones. She says, quote, the committee will be breaking and violating its own rules. Why even have rules? Uh, It should also be noted by moving forward today, the majority will be breaking the rules of the Senate. We're not the House. This is not a body intended to run on power alone and majority will. Patrick Leahy physically ripped up a copy of the committee rules as he lectured Graham and the other Republicans. Afterwards, Graham, red faced, specified that his decision to waive committee rules would only apply to this bill and not any future legislation. To that, Senator Dick Durbin said, I'm sorry, but I don't believe you. And I think that if Trump snaps his fingers again, you'll do it all over again. Mm -hmm. So this is disgusting, considering the late John McCain's call for a return to regular order in the Senate and the need to follow rules. And Lindsey Graham always says, you know, him and John McCain were great friends. Um, I think he's just totally shitting all over his um, Mm -hmm. his uh, dead friend. And thanks to Lindsey's asshole move in the Senate judiciary, he has earned his own moniker on Twitter. Hashtag. That's right. Move over, Moscow Mitch. Lindsey Graham Crackers is getting his own hashtag, Leningrad Lindsey. <laughs> it exploded on Twitter late Thursday after he pushed his asylum bill through the committee, totally shitting all over the committee rules. Um, the link here is that utilizing xenophobia is a common theme among the authoritarians of the world. So head to Twitter and give hashtag Leningrad Lindsey a social media shout out. We'll be right back. Hey, it's AG from Muller She Wrote. I'm here to tell you that we are a nation of immigrants. It's our diversity that makes us strong. Our motto is e pluribus unum, of many, one. 
These truths made me curious as to where my family came from, and it led me to discover more about them and my family history with the Ancestry DNA test. Ancestry DNA gives you so much more than just the places you're from. It gives you a feel for who you are and where your family came from and your family's story. Ancestry's data archives and record collections give you a more complete picture so you can trace your ancestors over time. And it's so easy to get started. I took the test and found out that not only was I not Irish, which was the family rumor for years, but something really funny happened. When I received my results, they were so comprehensive, they give you such deep information, that I had to scroll down a bit. But on the first screen, it said that I was 96% Western European and 4% Something else. I had to scroll down to find out what the 4% was. And I was really excited. I was like, ooh, this is my spicy part. So I scrolled down and found out that my 4% flavor is from the Caucasus. So guys, I'm white and Caucasian. I even found out I'm related to Charlemagne and some dude named Ethelred the Unready, who I totally relate to. So I was able to enhance my DNA experience with a robust family history completing my tree. And it gave me a complete picture of who I am and where my family came from. But most importantly... I found out about my responsibility to others, and that unless we're indigenous, we're all immigrants, and we must love and respect everyone's family story, because that is what makes America great. So go to Ancestry.com today for 20% off your Ancestry DNA kit. That's Ancestry.com for 20% off your DNA kit. Start building your story today at Ancestry.com. Daily Beans with Muller, she wrote Daily Beans. All right, guys, welcome back. More news from the weekend. All 83 ethics complaints against Justice Brett Kavanaugh have been permanently dismissed by the Committee on Judicial Conduct and Disability. Jordan, what's going on? Uh, yeah, so what you said is what's happening. That was <laughs> the concluded. end, and now on to the next story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was concluded on Thursday, and there is nowhere to go after this ruling, so it is just a completely done deal. This is a decision that came from the Committee on Judicial Conduct and Disability, and they confirmed a ruling that had happened in late 2018 from another panel of judges that was a, at an intermediate level. I, th I thought we heard about that. Like, they just dismissed them all, and we were like, what the fuck? And, but I guess it went on to the second level, and yep. now it's the final level. Yep, and uh, they dismissed it because as soon as Kavanaugh was appointed to that Supreme Court seat, he stopped being reviewed by the federal <sighs> judiciary's internal ethics review system, and such a system does not exist for anyone that sits on the Supreme Court. They don't have their own formal ethics review process like the federal appeals and district courts have. This reminds me of like when uh, uh, because of certain police unions, if they do something like if they do a, like unnecessary use of force or have complaints about, you know, acting like racists or, or uh, profiling people of color mm -hmm. and they get these marks on their, you know, their folders, their files, mm -hmm. and then they transfer to another department, all of those past digressions are not allowed to go with them. So you have no idea that they were like having all these problems before. Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. So if you're a lower court judge, you can fuck off the minute you're uh, appointed to SCOTUS, you're all absolved. of that just goes away. Yeah. And the only way that anything could be looked into at all is if Congress decides to do something and that's not going to happen. We here, have impeached right? a couple of judges, but not with this Congress. That's another reason it's so yes. important to vote. Not with this Congress, not with the showing that they had and all of the work that they did in cognitive dissonance, dissonance to get him confirmed in the first place. Yeah, because so. it's the same impeachment process. You still need two thirds of the vote in the Senate. We're not even close. Even if we mm -hmm. sweep the Senate with every seat we can possibly get, we will not have 67 votes. Yeah. In so, 2020. So the Kavanaugh thing. It's a long game. It's, yeah, it's a done deal for now. I guess if we flip this house and the senate blue maybe they would want to open something up if they have any reason well, house is blue but if, even if we flip the senate blue both uh, yeah i mean so like we oh, get so to, we both. get to a spot where they both are yeah <clears throat> yes yeah well yeah. aware the house is blue <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you were there yes <laughs> uh, but i do i i even if we like i said mathematically won every single right. seat we're up for in the senate right we still don't have the votes we're gonna have to wait till 2020 yeah two maybe i don't know i haven't looked at the math every six years these senators run and they're all staggered so uh yeah probably just a done deal yeah we we don't get to rest after 2020 yeah basically Yep. We got to get those 67 votes in the Senate and we're facing an uphill battle because of gerrymandering and also because of, you know, the Russians and all the other countries that uh, no one is stopping mm -hmm. from interfering. Mitch McConnell. <clears throat> 
Yeah, it's crazy how most of the work hasn't even, you know, gotten to a point where it can begin because we still have to replace people that are in power. Like we've gotten some legway with the podcast. Obviously, we have a lot of content, but most of it has not even really begun. Like once you flip the actual Senate, then you can start moving things through for sure. And you still need 60 votes to get around the filibuster. So like you were saying, yeah, 2022, like it's going to be the important part. <clears throat> Probably the most important part of 2020 in flipping the Senate is we need to get 51 votes in the Senate so that we can confirm the next SCOTUS judge. Yeah. I it, And no one talked about that in either debate, mm-hmm. and it's pissing me off. But it is the <laughs> most important, if not, I think it's one of the most important things mm-hmm. that we have to do is to get is to fix that Supreme Court. I, I think I know where they're not, not mentioning fixed, it. Not like the fixes in. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. right now books. we've got Kavanaugh in there and they fucked us with Merrick Garland. We need to repair those problems. Yep. Yeah. A lot of presidential candidates right now are looking to add judges, though. They're already saying, if you vote for me in 2020, I'll add five judges. Like, Buddha Judge is like, he wants to have 15 judges. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and that's actually yeah. a really good point because we've had nine for so long and our population has doubled a couple of times since mm-hmm. then. And we do need a more representative uh, panel panel of Supreme Court judges, nine people to represent the entire country is just a little bit off. Um, <laughs> just a little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's uncomfortable and untenable. Mm-hmm. And I do agree with that. But you are also you are you're going to need 60 votes in the Senate to pass that bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have to get there and we won't get there in 2020. But to appoint the next Supreme Court judge, because McConnell went nuclear, we I think we only need 51 mm-hmm. votes. Yeah. I, I heard it. Sorry, go ahead. I was just listening to the podcast Embedded that you were recommending. Yeah. And so they said Mitch only went nuclear like t- to this degree because the Democrats started it, apparently. That's exactly what I was just going to say. Crazy, Harry right? Reed, yeah. He blames Harry Reid. And Harry Reid said yeah. he's apologetic, too, for what he did. He said he is apologetic? Yeah. He said he regrets it. This. Yeah. He yeah. said he would never do it again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, once but you... Mitch went nuclear. He did because he said once Harry Reid voted for, I forget who the judge was or blocked it. They were like, "Fine, you want to play dirty? I'm gonna play dirty." And he's oh, been... so Harry Reid started oh, it. That's what Mitch don't said. Apologize, Harry Reid, for voting against an asshole judge. Well, what he said was he traded that judge for or Kavanaugh for one of those judges any day. So he regrets how much it's escalated because of his actions at the time. But you're right. How could he have known that it would get this how bad? How do we know this Mitch quickly? would go nuclear? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he went crazy. He did. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Our last episode was called Ratcliffe Sucks Already. And uh, <laughs> since then, Trump has withdrawn his nomination of the Republicans Yay. for the Republican congressman of Texas to be the director of national intelligence. He had no intelligence um, experience. We now have to, I think, consider the fact that since he sucks so bad and lied on his resume, he should be pulled from the intelligence committee. He should be pulled yes. from all of his committee seats. Why is this fucking liar? On committees, I, you know, Republicans are just, just assholes, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Apparently, Nunes was offered the position. Remember when Trump oh, and Nunes God. were meeting about DNI? Apparently, he was offered the position and said no because he wants to run the CIA. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Uh, we could have <laughs> Pete Hoekstra, the current ambassador to the Netherlands. You might remember this guy when he said there was a jihadist no-go zones in the, ne- in the Netherlands. And he was immediately fact-checked by a Dutch journalist and totally torn apart. And it was a really funny thing that went viral. What does that mean, jihad? How does no go zone? No go zones. There, that means that there are so many uh, Muslim terrorists in the Netherlands that they've created these neighborhoods where you can't go in there because you'll die. Oh my god! Because there's jihadists there who are Sharia law weirdos, and he's totally lying. And the the Dutch guy was like, "You're weird," Jesus. and totally took him apart. Um, he's also very anti-Muslim, obvi- obviously conspiracy theorist. And then there's another anti-Muslim conspiracy theorist, Fred Flights who was Bolton's former chief of staff, who thinks that the office of DNI is useless. It's an extra layer of bureaucracy we don't need, even though we created after 9-11 to have better communication so that we could get, you know, have, I think it's not a useless level of bureaucracy. Right. Like Space Force is, yeah. <laughs> um, because we already have the Air Force that does all that work, and now you want to add a Space Force and add a, 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 um, a Surgeon General for them and a health care sector for them, and you they, and that, that's going to add like 96 layers of bureaucracy. I think the DNI is a very important job. Mm-hmm. Uh, and But this guy, Fred Flights, 
thinks it's stupid, which means it's perfect for a Trump pick because Trump likes to put people. Trump would put a dingo in charge of a baby is what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is great. Like with the <laughs> with the guy, the guy at the head of the EPA who thinks that climate change is a hoax and the lady in, uh, in charge of education that thinks education is stupid. Public education. We don't need that. We need yeah, private I charter schools. Bannon put him on this. He's like, put people in these positions that can break everything. <laughs> yeah. That's what part of that whole break it down and mm-hmm. burn it, burn it to the ground. And, and the phoenix will rise from the ashes. And, and here we are with this totally corrupt, idiotic yeah, administration. Racist phoenix. Yeah, the racist <laughs> phoenix. Uh, also this weekend, Oversight Committee Chair Elijah Cummings' house was broken into. And we know, as we know, Trump referred to his district earlier in the week as a rat and rodent infested place where no human being would live. Uh, even though many human beings live yeah, there. Yeah, that's what he meant. He doesn't see him as human beings. Yeah, it's exactly right. And when he use when he uses infestation and rats and ver, ver, you know vermin and rodents, he's always talking about people of color. Yep. Um, after learning that Cummings' house was broken into, Trump tweeted, "Oh, I hear Elijah Cummings' house was broken into. Too bad." That's what he said. Wow. Uh, the president of the United States about. Uh, a sitting yeah, Congress a congressman person. Yeah. Whose, house, whose home was broken into over the weekend. Like, I mean, I, I, I hate to play he, this game, but I think what you put if the Obama... Hit on I was going to say that, and also if Obama said anything like this, because it's hard for me, I get so jaded to Trump's behavior that I, it's hard to imagine, like, is this crazy for him? But yeah, it's all crazy. It's nuts. Yeah. yeah like, if you think if Obama came out, like, let's say, uh, oh, John McCain died, too bad. Right. What? Mm-hmm. Which he basically tweeted many times. <laughs> yeah. Not, well, not... Not directly. Not Obama. Oh, not Obama, but sorry. <laughs> right, right, right. Trump. I'm a clarification. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not real. Yeah, but Trump, he pushes the boundaries in ways that just numbs us. It's, it's just so it's abusive. Gross. Yeah. It's, it's not uh, becoming of uh, the, uh, a human being, let alone the office of the president. Mm-hmm. And Republican William Hurd announced his plans to leave Congress in 2020. He's from Texas 23, uh, a purple district that could now turn blue because the incumbent with name recognition is leaving. It's usually a name recognition thing. Uh, we just saw Will Hurd in the hearings with Mueller. He's like, Russia's still on us? Yeah, this is bad, right? Yes, this is terrible. We have no election security? Yeah, as we sit here. Um, the Republicans are now on track to beat their number of retirements ahead of the 2018 blue tsunami election. And we will continue to follow this story as uh, the election approaches. This is very helpful for us to yeah. even deepen the blueness of the House of Representatives and hopefully flip the Senate to our majority. Mm-hmm. Go home. Go to freaking, I don't know, Hawaii and don't say anything publicly. <laughs> Have a yeah. nice rest of your life. Yeah, go to That's, Thailand. Flee. I don't even. Yeah, just... This is making me realize how important independent media is. Like not, not to even toot our horn, just the whole whole industry it's like we're up against a fight of of data science and people using that weaponizing it and the only i guess thing to counter that would just be the truth right yeah, plus there's no money here yeah. um you know our patrons support us it's it's, it's patron supported <laughs> news uh, a lot like uh, scott stedman or seth abramson or these curatorial journalists independent natasha bertrand is now with politico but you know we aren't owned by a multi-conglomerate corporation uh, worth billions of dollars like Viacom, et cetera, um, <clears throat> or Fox News under whatever they're under. Right, they have troll know. factories. They're literally working yep. hard right now to make sure that in 2020 people are confused or have the wrong information. And so it, should, it blows my mind that all or, we can do, yeah. Or they're simply just focused on ratings and clicks. And yeah, so I guess say that's the surface, like, yeah. They say things like, Bill Barr killed seven investigations, Mueller handed off, oh, which yeah. is totally not true. Right. Well, I think it is a lot. For clicks, one of the things that was most upsetting about when we went to Politicon was seeing how close as uh, this is maybe a bad way for me to look at it, but seeing like extremist right people and extremist left people just canoodling like their friends. It's like, is this a fucking joke to you? You guys, as much as you present yourselves on television, fundamentally believe that the other side is responsible for the downfall of this country. Right. And then you sit here talking because you're part of like the same kind of media groups and appearances and stuff. And well, it, that's the that's the strength of a face to face interaction, isn't it? We can't yeah. treat each other like shit when we're face to face. That's a positive way. I was going to say it's kind of beautiful. <laughs> Ideally, yeah, there would be. I'm taking the pessimistic way, which is like, but that's fair. Yeah, I, I think it's just yeah, the ideal situation would be a convention where we can all like hold hands and sing kumbaya. Yeah, everybody but, should be able to. But, but we're at a point where things are so extreme that you can't just say, oh, that's the other guy. Ha ha. Yeah, and it's like the other guy, is, and they think the same of us. But I, I do think we're on the right side of it. Well, yeah, so because polarized. everything they, yeah. they say about us tearing shit down, like here's a great 
great example. Joni Ernst tweeted this weekend. Joni Ernst. Medicare for illegal immigrants. The Green New Deal. Free college. The agenda of the left has been on full display this week. We need to keep our Senate majority now more than ever if we're going to protect our democracy from the left's socialist wish wish list. And I responded, think about this for one second. If you're able, all of those things help people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of them. Medicare for immigrants. The Green New Deal. Free college. Their their agendas on display. Oh, that really shithole agenda of helping Mm -hmm. people. I think what it is, it's it's, again racism. I think it's the idea of the others. It's not about the fact that they don't want free college themselves or health care. They don't want other people to come in and take over the population because of these great things. Specifically Medicare for illegal immigrants. But the the Green New Deal and free college for everybody. You think they would want their kids, their white kids to have it. But they're like, you know what? I would rather not give it to anyone than to give it to them too. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But I mean. What I'm saying is she put the immigrant tag only on the Medicare thing, not yeah. on the college thing and not. On right. The... That's more on the nose for sure. Yeah. But yeah. for Yeah. It's exactly that. It's like if I can't have it, no one can have it. That's right. like the weird. Or they just don't want the America to become. Yeah. They don't want it to be attractive <laughs> to brown people. They don't want us to come here and, and you know, get better and like have a place. I mean, it, to me, it really feels yeah, like but she doesn't even want free college for white people in the country. She doesn't even want a Green New Deal to help white people. In I the bet country. They... even though people of color are, are there is environmental injustice and racism that happens but <laughs> i was gonna say if there was a policy that said just for white people they'd probably be for it yeah <laughs> so they can't really say it like they want to probably but i, yeah. I do think it boils and down she to did it. throw the word immigrants in there for, for because that of, reason maybe because a policy really specifically said that but yeah i bet when it comes to all of them they wish they could say for immigrants but you know yeah. when i when i meet people on the right and you know i i don't hate them the Mm -hmm. way they hate us i want them to have free health care i want them to have free college i want Mm -hmm. them to become educated i want them to have a better life i want them to have living wages i want that for everyone in america and and that and and that's what democrats do and to to try to insult us with our our paper straws <laughs> our agenda on display it was like that that shirt i see like the gay agenda are you afraid of the gay agenda and the gay agenda it's like this shirt that says uh monday margaritas tuesday tacos uh <laughs> thursday gay friday like this is the gay agenda right you know it's like, hatred it's xenophobia so... it's homophobia you're right it's all these awful things in society that it's just like concentrated into one party right now but what's so wrong with our agenda we want that for everyone mm-hmm. not it's, just it's, us it's like, like how it, do you explain homophobia it's so deep rooted it, right it's so like b- not our thinking that it is hard to it's not like it. the democrats going to come in and do medicare for all and free college just for democrats you have to be a registered democrat in order to get these benefits it's right. for every american they just they hate those people that are benefiting as well so much that they i and that's my obviously and opinion, medicare but. for illegal immigrants right now illegal immigrants go to emergency rooms and we pay for it but so, they don't even yeah usually go there because they can't like they'll they risk being they understood yeah. yes but they do get free health care in hospitals if they go yeah yeah, be, yeah. And and it's not free. What happens is, is they go and they don't have insurance. So that falls on the taxpayer, which is what Medicare would fall <laughs> under. So we are paying for the health care of illegal immigrants, whether it's through the emergency room, mm-hmm. which is way more expensive mm-hmm. than preventive care. Uh, then we would be paying the taxes if they were allowed to have Medicare. We are still paying for it. And that law that they can go to anyone who goes to an emergency room in the United States has to be treated mm-hmm. uh, is EMTALA. And, and it was passed and written by Republicans. That's a very good point. Yeah. And so we are paying Medicare for illegal immigrants right now, but we could be saving so much money. Mm-hmm. It's not about the money to them. You make a very good point, but that's it's what about it, their brown. It, that's what it is. That's all it is. They're like, take my money, build the wall, just keep them out. Or they don't understand. They think, well, I. they don't think that they're paying for it right now. Oh, that's you. The math might go over their head. But I'm not the best at math either. Numbers and I still are Arabic. understand. Again, they're afraid of brown people. True, true. But if you told me, like you just did, like what's happening, I'd be like, oh, well, it makes sense then. But they just don't even care about the truth. It's that doesn't feelings. fit on a bumper sticker. Exactly. And it doesn't, and it doesn't, and it, it's not subsumed in hate. So mm-hmm. Right. That's all. There you go. The emotions for them. All right. Rants at the end of the Daily Beans. <laughs> that's our show this week. You guys, thank you so much again. Thanks for your support. Uh, I it was a tough weekend, and I hope that you're all okay. And I hope that you guys really just hang out with your family, hang out with your loved ones, hang out with your friends, make the most of that time. It's really important. Do you guys have any final thoughts? No, just uh, hopefully we'll have a better rest of the week. I mean, I can't say that obviously for the families or for the state of the country, but just uh, hopefully things get better in general. Just hang on. Yeah. yeah. Call your reps. Leave a message. Do that. Mm-hmm. What's the number again? It is. She has it right in her keychain. I love it. (laughs) 202224321. 
Yeah, we got that from a um, a, a patron, patron yeah. in DC. In DC. Yeah. yeah, at the Miracle Theater. She was very mm-hmm. pleased when she heard that we still had them. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's great. It's a good thing to do if you just got an extra five minutes. Yeah, it doesn't even take that long, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it feels good once you call them and you actually get through and you feel like you're heard. It's like a high. And trust yeah. me, I, I know highs. I, I feel <laughs> like it's a, it's a good natural patriotic high. Take it high. from Jaleesa. <laughs> yeah, smoke weed, call your reps. Right? Do it. <laughs> All right, guys, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I've been AG. I've been Jaleesa Johnson. I've been Jordan Coburn. And them's the beans. The Daily Beans is produced by AG, featuring Jaleesa Johnson and Jordan Coburn, and engineered and edited by Mackenzie Mazell and Starburns Industries. Our marketing manager is Sarah Lee Steiner, and our merchandising manager is Sarah Hirschberger Valencia. Fact-checking and research by AG, Jaleesa Johnson, and Jordan Coburn, with executive assistance by Amanda Reeder. Our music is written and performed by They Might Be Giants. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios, and our website is dailybeanspod.com. <laughs>